Hello, guys. Welcome to one more Revisa aí, professor, English version, and you are welcome. We are very happy for one more opportunity. And in this lesson, lesson five, extreme hit, we will study about many characters and points to understand why's and how's of our life. And so I'd like to invite our partner, our friend, our son, Arthur. Arthur, how are you? I'm okay. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here once again now for the fifth lesson. Yes, uh, important lesson. Well, I'd like to say a prayer to begin in our lesson. Please uh, close your eyes and pray with me. Dear God, we are very thankful for your blessings, hope, forgiveness, and care for us. Please follow us in this lesson. Uh, light us by your Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, amen. Well, this lesson is very interesting. Uh, there are many points that I'd like to uh, um, share and understand with you. Uh, in this study, we will look at the extreme hit a lesson that help us understand the whys of suffering and the hows to overcome evil, of course. The lesson, the authors uh, ask a question about whether God has any fears of being misunderstood that's the point i don't believe that god is concerned about that god is uh, uh, god does not change his uh, our creator is uh, our father nothing can stop him so uh, i'd like to begin with this point with my opinion uh out the author places this idea about the fear of God. Well, I understand that's a discuss, disgusting question, question to our class and friends, but uh, I think that uh, God is above of this kind of idea. So let's look some ideas about this lesson. The first question to open our lesson uh, with Genesis 22 about Abraham's And Isaac is, why did God ask Abraham to kill his son? Well, this question is a eternal question, right? Well, this is the Sunday's lesson. And I like to uh, respond. My, uh, my answer will be, the answer I would give will be, what did God need Isaac's death for? Would God want me to kill my son? if he himself forbade it. So we can understand that what is important to God is not necessarily the result, the end, but the process. As long as we are in intimacy with God, knowing his will, knowing his moral values, we can face extreme heat. God can communicate with us through these difficulties. So Sunday's lesson opens in this thought about this kind of test. God was concerned about Abraham, not Isaac. Do you understand? That's uh, a point to meditate. On the second point, Monday's lesson talks about Hosea. Hosea uh, is a wonderful history because uh, God asks him uh, to take his unfaithful wife back. And I like to share four points that I learned in this question. The first point, uh, responding our our question in this day, first point that I learned in, in Ozia's story, story is reprehension. Otherwise, Israel will feel shame with your nakedness and will die with thirst. On the reading of Hosea 2, verses 2 and 3, 
we can uh, read about reprehension. Hosea 2, 5 to 7, second point, uh, obstruction. God will block uh, her path with thorn bushes, will wall her in so that she cannot find her way. She, uh, in case Israel, of course, uh, will uh, try to chase her lovers, but without success. So she will decide to go back to your husband. In Hosea 2, verses 8 and 9, the third point that we learned, the third point is God will take off the blessings. With the gold and silver, Israel went to prostitute herself. God will take off because it was he who blessed the people. So don't forget this. If God gave, God can take off too. This is the point to another uh, uh, story, Job, that Arthur will talk about. Uh, Hosea 2, verse 10, the fourth point, the fourth lesson to expose the lewdness. All the lovers, no one will take her out of the Lord. So uh, the first uh, interesting uh, issues about the experience God when he bring Israel back is God uh, is risking not recognized by Israel. The second point, uh, God uh, is working for Israel. Uh, and sometimes we don't like what he's doing. Uh, Israel has a, a good, interesting point. But Hosea concludes the chapter 2 in another kind of lessons. This point, this conclusion is very important to discuss in our class, to discuss in our group. Why? Because the second part, the... Uh, the conclusion of chapter 2 of Hosea talk about a goodness God that call her back, Israel back, uh, and God call us back because he's merciful, tenderly loved. Uh, well, uh, God is concerned about my salvation and without uh, a kind of angry, uh, God calls, calls us because he loves us. So Hosea chapter 2 is an important, marvelous lesson to us. And so go to Tuesday's lesson, Surviving Through uh, Worship. Arthur, what do you think about the Tuesday's lesson? Uh, so as you mentioned, Tuesday's lesson is about Job. It's a very powerful and difficult lesson, actually. The story of Job is a, is a difficult one. But, well, Tuesday's lesson opens with the opening, sorry, uh, with the opening to Tuesday, uh, to Job's stories. So uh, when Satan comes to see God with the other angels, saying that he's been roaming throughout the earth, God asks him about Job. That's very interesting because it is God who brings Job to Satan's attention. That is, God gives his explicit permission to Satan to destroy Job's possessions, children, and his own physical health. With that thought, the lesson brings some very, very hard questions for us to, to, to try and answer. The first one is, if God uh, is given permission for Job to suffer, what difference does it make whether God or Satan is personally inflicting the suffering? The second question is, how can God be righteous and holy when he actively allows Satan to cause Job such pain? And the last question is, is Job's situation a special case or does God still deals with us this same way today? So the lesson doesn't isn't really worried in answering those questions right now. Instead, it's more concerned in talking about what Job did in focusing us to his experience so that maybe we can find our answers uh, in his story. So when faced with uh, suffering, so, so, such great suffering, 
uh, we can respond in two in two ways. We can uh, either become bitter and angry, turning our backs on a God we believe to be cruel or just non-existent. Or we can do just like Job did. We can hang on to God more tightly and worship him. Uh, in Job 1, 20, verses 20 and 21, we see Job tearing his robe, shaving his head, and falling to the ground before worshiping the Lord. He accepts his helplessness and recognizes that he has no claim to anything. He says, naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will depart. Or is that the lesson? Uh, yes. Uh, then he acknowledges that God is still in total control. He says, the Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. And lastly, he concludes by reasserting his belief in the righteousness of God. Uh, by saying, may the name of the Lord be praised. So this is Tuesday's lesson. This is how Job uh, reacted. This is how he responded to his difficult suffering to his hardships and and as i said it yes yes no uh, you can conclude this idea I just, no I, I was just going to say that as i said uh it brings some very hard questions for us to try and answer try to, to figure them out but that's it yeah there are two uh kind of reactions that god uh, can take uh first reaction uh reaction Job can be bitter and angry with God because Job uh, didn't understand all the situations, all the contest about this uh, trial. Mm -hmm. But another reaction that Job taken was hang on to God. Why? Because as Job didn't the real situation about this trial, this context, we we don't understand all the contests that are around us when we uh, are through, uh, we are proving our kind of test, kind of trial. So uh, this is important to hang on to God, uh, choose to follow him. And this reaction uh, shows the kind of special guy that Job was because uh, God uh, invite uh, God start a discussion with Satan about Job. Job is upright as this. Job is a special guy and fear me. So the trial of Job is more important for Job than me because I am not so special uh, like that, like him. So uh, the reaction of Job is for me, not the trial. The trial is different because I am another kind of person, but I can uh, uh, through I can overcome my trials, right? So I can I can choose this I can choose I can uh, this kind of reaction. So this aspect of uh, worship God is for me a kind of important value. Because uh, Job shows what kind of moral values and hope uh, he 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 had he has. Yeah, Job is a is a fantastic example of how we can uh, behave when we are uh, going through the crucible. And speaking of great examples, we're going to Wednesday's lesson. It is about Paul who was also a great example. Uh, as God's chosen apostle, Paul endured more than most people, yet he was not crushed. Uh, as we can read in 2 Corinthians 1, verses 8 and 9, uh, Paul says, We were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despaired of life itself. Indeed, we felt we had received the sentence of death, but this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God, who raised the dead. Uh, of Paul's vivid descriptions of his hardships, as we can read in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, uh, are not to make us feel sorry for him. 
they are actually for us to know that even when we're in the depths, even when we are going through very difficult times, uh, the Father still can intervene to bring his compassion and comfort to us. And not only that, uh, they also give us of, of these experiences, this, of these difficult times also give us uh, authority and experience, real, real experience, uh, so that we can reach other people. Uh, we can read about uh, these ideas in 2 Corinthians 1, but now in chapter, uh, on verses 3 and 4. Uh, Blessed be the God, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort uh, with which we ourselves are comforted by God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also abounds through Christ. Paul was ready to face uh, sufferings, hardships, the crucible. He was also ready to share uh, his experiences, uh, to use uh, the experiences the crucible would give him to, to reach out, to help the ones in need. Uh, in 2 Corinthians 1, but now in the verse 10, uh, he teaches us how to do it also. Uh, and it's basically three simple steps. The first one is to believe God's proven track record, to understand that he has helped us to this point, so he will continue to do so. He has been faithful and he will yes. always yes. Uh, be. Uh, a the formula. Second, yeah, the second step is uh, to focus on God himself and understand that he's our goal, he's our sustainer, our deliverer. And the third step, the last one, is to help one another, to help our friends, our brothers in faith, our sisters in faith, uh, through intercessional prayer. We can help each other by praying with one another, but also by praying for one another. And that's there is awesome. a yeah, there's an awesome power in the prayer, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and well, on this on this uh, verse, uh, on verses. Uh, 10 and 11, I think it's on verse 11, uh, Paul says that he is, uh, that he, he recognizes the power, uh, the, the congregation of the Corinthians uh, prayers had on his life. Yeah. Uh, in this lesson, this day's lesson, I think that one uh, step, one try, one uh, one kind of uh, try to reach the people is to share the comfort that God gave to me. Because uh, there are a kind of uh, good feeling happening to help other people. So uh, beginning our year in Petropolis, here in Rio de Janeiro, uh, a tragedy, tragedy reached the city. So many people through, through all the country here in Brazil uh, help the citizens and our brothers in Petropolis. Why? Because uh, we feel this happen, this good feeling. But uh, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 1, in verse 4, the comfort that we receive from God uh, should be shared. So the testimony that what God uh, did for you can uh, comfort other people. Because other people uh, is uh, sometimes in, in these uh, difficult times has a difficult uh, idea, vision, to understand, to see uh, a result, a hope in the end of this path. And another kind of point, as you say, the intercession, the about prayer. So the be a pray, uh, intercession prayer is very important to 
share this kind of hope. There are another point in Wednesday's lesson that is a trap. What trap? Well, sometimes I can uh, I can be pride by myself because uh, I have self pity. And when we help other people, we uh, we think more on other people than me. So uh, help other people is a kind of uh, fulfill the mission that God gave to Israel and for us too. Comfort my people. That is in Isaiah chapter 40. And on New Testament, Jesus uh, shared this mission to his disciples as well. So uh, this is very important to think not only in us, né, like a self-pit, but in others. There is an important point. So uh, can I go on? Thursday's lesson, Extreme Heat, the same title of our lesson. Uh, in this lesson, we can understand uh, Isaiah uh, chapter 43, uh, on where God says that his people will pass through waters and through fire. These are, of course, uh, figurative uh, extreme dangers. But perhaps uh, they hint at the crossing of the Red Sea and the Jordan, both fearful times, but times that paved the way to a new life. So uh, in, this, in this life on this earth, we don't understand all the signals, all the contexts, that around us on our trials, but in heaven, probably, we will understand. So this idea is in 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and chapter 13. God is not severe. God is a good God, is a love God. Uh, sometimes we, many people uh, think about that God looks more like a bully. But uh, he sets out with a purpose that causes us a considerable hard times. But these hard times is not the, not the concern about the results, the end, but to burial us, to transform us as the process go on. So there are uh, three lessons of kind of these crucibles to us. The first lesson that God's extreme hit is to destroy our sin, not ourselves. The second lesson, God's extreme hit is not to make us miserable, but to make us pure as we were created to be. Wow, this is very important. Third lesson, God's care for us through all things is constant and tender. So God is the same, so never change. So he will never leave us alone. Because on Psalm 23, God uh, suffering with us. So this lesson is very interesting. Not, uh, I'm not concerned about the fear of God to be misunderstood uh, for all humankind. No, no, I don't think about it. I agree that the providence of God, his care, his love, his tender for us, his goodness is attractive, is the attractive to uh, our choice to hang on to him. So I'd like to finish reading one paragraph on Friday's lesson. There are in Testimonies for the Church, Volume 5, page 316, the second paragraph of Friday's lesson. If in the providence of God we are called upon the endured trials, let us accept the cross and drink the bitter cup, remembering that it is a Father's hand that holds it to our lips. Let us trust Him in the darkness as well as in the day. Can we not believe that He will give us everything that is for our good? Even in the night of affliction, how can we refuse to lift heart 
and voice in grateful praise when we remember the love to us expressed by the cross of Calvary. So this thought, uh, remember the Tuesday's lesson that uh, Arthur talks about. So this is the uh, lesson five about the trials, about the whys and hows, the suffering and trials came upon us and can burial us, transform us, uh, reshape us in the new creatures. Arthur, final words, what do you think? It was a very, very interesting uh, lesson. Uh, talking about the, the, the crucible is being, is being very interesting and it's, it, it's been teaching me some powerful lessons, I think. So thank you very much for coming. Thank, friends, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and click on thumbs up. And on next week, we will see again with lesson six. Arthur, are you ready for the final affirmation, final question? So thank you very much. Arthur, I studied the lesson. Do you? Do you?